Now before we apply our texture, we're going to make sure that the Arnold render engine is on our interface. And you'll see by default usually it appears up here at the top of the user interface. If you don't see it appearing here, you would want to go to Windows, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager. And at the bottom of the Plugin Manager, you're going to see MTOA, which stands for Maya to Arnold. And you'll click on the Load and Auto Load and simply close it out. Now we're going to right click and choose Assign New Material. And you'll see that in your Material Attribute window, there's the word Arnold. I'm going to click on the word Arnold and I'm going to choose the AI Standard Surface as my texture. Now I'm going to go to the Texture Attributes here, the Texture Editor, and I'm going to name this Bird Box. And the workflow is similar to what we are accustomed to from Ray Trace, but, but you'll notice first off that under the word base you'll see the word color and it appears below the word weight. Now that color node is exactly the same as if we were using a Lambert or a, or a Blin or a Ping. So I'm going to click on the checkerboard pattern and we're going to use the system built-in checker pattern. I'm going to select the geometry and hit 6 on the keyboard if my checkerboard doesn't appear. So the workflow for our first half of our tutorial to build a virtual 3D box that will be in our Acrobat file uh, is pretty straightforward and pretty much the same as uh, if we were using Ray Trace. We want our checkerboard pattern to be perfect squares. So I'm selecting the geometry and because I've clicked on Delete by Type History I can now go to the hotbox by holding down the spacebar. I will go to UV and I'm going to choose automatic mapping. And if you recall when we use this in the prior semester, your geometry would be surrounded by these six color blue boxes. And we would not edit this on screen. I'm simply going to go back to my object mode, select my geometry, and now we're going to go to that UV editor that we introduced. I'm going to zoom back on this and I can use my option key if I want. I could hit A on the keyboard if I wanted to, as if I was in my viewport. And I'm going to do two things. I'm going to turn off the checkerboard reference up here where this little mountain peak appears just to the left of the checkerboard icon in the UV editor. And it kind of hides that for us because we've already plotted these squares perfectly. So now we need to sew this together. Now, just to make it a little bit easier to see, to the right of this little horseshoe magnet, I'm going to click on the blue box. And you'll see now that it's given your UV maps for each face, that color blue. And you'll notice that they fit very nicely now to the contour of the geometry. We've got the four vertical rectangles and we've got the top and bottom appearing here. Now we want to sew this together so it's one shell instead of six separate ones. And if you recall, we did that through the UV editor. I'm going to start by right-clicking on one of my rectangles, and I'm going to choose Edge. And I'm going to select an edge. And when I do, I see a corresponding edge on the other side selected as well, which means now when we choose Move and Sew, it will snap it right to that seam where it belongs. And there's two ways to do this. In the prior semester, we used polygons, and we chose Move and Sew, and now it's on its own. I'm going to select the next edge. We can also use the tool function inside the UV editor. And if you look below the word texture, you may see a vertical line with a triangle against it. When you see Maya with a vertical line and a triangle, as in this case as well, uh, that means that there's a hidden menu. I'm going to click on that to open it because I know that this tool in the lower right corner is the tool function for Move and Sew, which corresponds to the drop-down menu Move and Sew. Now the one we used before we even introduced this tool that we're looking at right now, if you recall, I'm going to select this edge. G on the keyboard allows us to repeat the previous function without having to look for a menu option. So that seems to serve the purpose pretty well. 
Now we're going to sew the top and the bottom where they belong. So I'm going to select this edge and I'll hit G. I'll select this bottom edge. I'll hit G. In order to prepare this to go into Photoshop, we needed to put any UV map in the upper right hand corner of this UV window. I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose shell because now it's all one shell. I'll hit W and I'll move it into that upper right hand corner. Hit R to get my scale tool. I'll scale just enough to fit inside that box. I'm going to go to my model now. Right click. Choose object. Because if we don't go to the object state for our geometry, we won't be able to export the UV map. Now, the next thing we need to do, if you looked at the model, uh, the picture of the model that was finished inside the folder, there was a little ball on top to open the lid of this box once we get to that point where we have it completely uh, modeled. So let's go ahead and introduce a polygon sphere. I'm going to hold down the space bar. I'm going to go to Create Polygon Primitive Sphere. I'm just going to use the default setting. And now I'm going to put this on top of the box and scale to the proportion I may want. Now, it's a symmetrical shape, so you could use either the front or side view to put it initially where you'd like it to be. And I'm going to scale it a bit before I go any further, so I'll click and drag like so. Look at the snapshot that I've enclosed in the tutorial file. It's no particular size. I'm not going to give you a size that you need to follow, but use your best judgment to get the shape you want. And I'm going to put it over the box. Just by eye, I'll center that. So if we look at our geometry now, we should have something like this. Now we need to add the same texture to this because I would like it to be on the same texture map as the checkerboard pattern. So I'm going to select the sphere, and I'm going to get my hypershade. Now, if you recall, the hypershade is a little blue sphere with a white circle on it. If you don't have that, you can go to Windows, Rendering Editors, and there is hypershade. If you need to add it to your toolbar, then you hold down Command-Shift, Windows, Rendering Editors, hypershade. Now, once I've got the hypershade up, I'm going to do one of two things. I can select the sphere and then right click on bird box node and choose at 12 o'clock assigned material selection. Or if I chose, I could middle mouse drag and drop. I'll hit six on the keyboard and now I see the checkerboard pattern is on that as well. Now we've got to close this out for a moment. We need to have this obviously much smaller and it can't interfere with the texture that we've already applied and to put in the corner of our UV map. So I'm going to go to the UV editor, right click, choose shell, select that sphere's shell, hit W on the keyboard to get my move tool, and I'm going to put it up in the right hand corner here. Now I know it has to be much smaller than this. It doesn't, the texture for the ball itself is not going to be the size of the entire texture. So I'm going to hit R on the keyboard and I'll just scale this down a bit before I proceed. I'm going to go back to my object mode inside my viewport. I'm going to select the sphere and the box. And now inside my editor, I see the representation in a UV map of both of those elements. Our objective now is to get the UV map for the sphere from here down to the corner. So if I'm in my object mode and I've selected the geometry, I can now right click over the sphere's UV map, I'm going to choose shell once again, I'll click on it, hit W, and I'm going to drag it into the upper right hand quarter quadrant. I'm going to hit R on the keyboard, I'm just going to scale that to fit it in like so. So the, uh, the um, texture mapping, or excuse me, the UV mapping gets a little subjective on where you want to put these things. The thing you should have to bear in mind is that you want to make sure that all the UV maps that have to be textures appear inside that upper right hand corner. Now we're ready to save this out as a .png so that we can go into Photoshop for our third part of our process and build our texture map. So once again, make sure you're in the object mode, shift select your geometry, 
and inside the UV editor, choose polygons, UV snapshot. I'm going to browse and direct this to my desktop and my source image folder and I'll name it bird box skin. I'll click on save and by default the size is usually set for 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels and that's fine for this tutorial. If you're doing PC portfolio and you thought you could be printing them out you may want to bump that up to double that but this is something you would decide along the way. Now the other thing we want to do is make sure that it's a ping so that we get just the UV wireframe in which to build our Photoshop layers uh, and use that wireframe UV as our reference. I'm going to click OK. Command S to save. And next we'll go into Photoshop. 